Let's listen to some words from Luke chapter 15, a well-known parable of Jesus. The tax collectors and other notorious sinners often came to listen to Jesus teach. This made the Pharisees and teachers of religious law complain that he was associating with such sinful people, even eating with them. So Jesus told them this story. Or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Won't she light a lamp and sweep the entire house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she will call in her friends and neighbours and say, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost coin. In the same way, there is joy in the presence of God's angels when even one sinner repents. It's true what he said, isn't it? You can just imagine that woman searching the house from top to bottom, pulling back the furniture, brushing away the cobwebs, rummaging around in nooks and crannies, her frustrating, frustration mounting all the while, until at last, joy of joys, the coin is found. I've been there myself many a time. The picture all too familiar. And yes, when you finally come up trumps, you can get carried away. Your sense of satisfaction out of all proportion to what it was that you were looking for. Why do we do it? Because no matter how trivial the sum involved, we know it's worth something. And we don't like to see good money go to waste. But can you really apply that to the way God feels about us? I'd like to think so, but I have my doubts. For much as though I'd like to believe it, are any of us worth that much? Enough for him to put himself out on our behalf, spend time seeking us out, and actually go so far as to rejoice when he finds us? I find that hard to swallow, I'm afraid. For when I look at my life, the fact is that I feel pretty worthless sometimes. So little value. So much that is cheap and empty. It's not just the mistakes I make, the evil I do, the following I'm guilty of, though there is enough of that and more. No, it's the good things too. My love, my act of kindness, my rare attempts at service, for even those are tainted, more about myself than others, my own kudos rather than their welfare. Could God conceivably be bothered one way or the other about our ultimate fate, whether we accept or reject him, love or loathe him? Would he even consider wasting time on people like us? It's a staggering idea, isn't it? Understandably hard to accept, but that's what Jesus is saying. That each one of us is not just worth something, but special. Precious in God's sight. Important enough for him to go on looking for us day after day until the search is finally rewarded. I didn't believe it. And I'm not sure I even do now. Yet I'm beginning to wonder, for despite my doubts and questions, my repeated rejection, the way Jesus continues to reach out has set me thinking. He hasn't given up on me, or anyone else as far as I can see, our lives really seeming to matter to him. Maybe. Just maybe. It could be true. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, it's wonderful enough that when we were lost, you came and found us. It's more wonderful still that you continue to seek us out when we go astray again, that you go looking for us day after day, year after year, for as long as it takes, as often as it is needed. 
no matter who we are or what we've done. We still matter to you, enough for you never to rest until we are restored to your side. Teach us to recognise the astonishing breath of your love and to respond with gratitude in faithful service and joyful praise. In your name we pray. Amen.